So this video will uh, talk a little bit about reactions of benzene and its derivatives. We're only going to do um, electrophilic aromatic substitution. Um, so we won't do nucleophilic aromatic substitution. And so one of the things to know about benzene is that benzene does not react like a normal alkene. So if I were to react benzene with uh, bromine, Br2, I would never um, do a typical uh, bromine addition to just one double bond and form this molecule here. And the reason is because it costs a lot of energy to break up the aromaticity. This is aromaticity is very special characteristic. Um, and if it's broken, then it, then the molecule will lose energy. So that's not good. So benzene, a lot of times, uh, will react through what we call aromatic substitution, uh, either nucleophilic or electrophilic. And, and that will determine whether it's nucleophilic or electrophilic. That's going to determine whether or not um, you add a nucleophile to the ring or you add an electrophile to the ring. So we're going to do electrophilic aromatic substitution, which in this case we're going to add an electrophile. So normally if I add take benzene and add bromine to it and the presence of a catalyst I get a halogenation where one bromine is added to the ring and then the aromaticity remains intact. So the basic paradigm for substitution is here where I just take one hydrogen on the ring and I substitute it for an electrophile. All right? So um, under electrophilic aromatic substitution conditions benzene will be my um, nucleophile and then whatever I add to the benzene ring is going to be my electrophile. So there's several reactions we're going to look at. We're going to look at halogenation, alkylation, and acylation for now and then um, we'll, add, we'll do another video later in the week with nitration and sulfonation. So let's look at um, halogenation of aromatic rings. Okay, number one, these reactions are highly endothermic and so you have to use iron bromide as a catalyst or some Lewis acid catalyst to activate uh, bromine. And uh, when iron bromide is added, it, you, it forms this activation complex here where now bromine, the bromine-bromine bond is weakened and is ready for a nucleophilic attack by the ring. So we'll show you that in a second. So the Lewis acid catalyst uh, lowers the activation energy and in turn uh, speeds up the reaction. And then iron bromide also activates uh, bromine for attack, which I, which I just mentioned a second ago. So let's look at the mechanism. So in the mechanism, the first step is um, activation of bromine by um, iron bromide, iron 3 bromide. And then once this uh, complex is formed, uh, the ring actually attacks the complex. And you have uh, the ring, the double bond in the ring. Uh, attacking bromine and then breaking the bromine bromine bond and so over here you generate what's called an arenium ion intermediate that's this intermediate here notice the plus charge is here and the bromine added to this carbon okay so this is the slow step and the reason is because you lose about 150 kilojoules per mole of energy by breaking that aromaticity up and so what you want to do immediately is reestablish the aromaticity and get those get that uh, those three double bonds that are fully conjugated back into the ring here and so what happens here is that the iron bromide acts as a base and deprotonates here and then this, this pair of electrons comes here to reestablish my aromaticity to give me my uh, brominated product all right plus HBr and then I regenerate the catalyst which can go back and do the reaction again all right so let's look at another reaction this is a re this reaction is uh, called Friedel Crafts alkylation, uh, in which I add an alkyl group to my uh, benzene. So, what I need in this case is a benzene ring, I need um, an alkyl halide, and then aluminum uh, chloride, which is going to act just like iron bromide as my catalyst. So, again, aluminum chloride is my catalyst, and it extracts the halogen from my um, alkyl halide. So, let's look at what happens in the mechanism. Here, the first step is extraction of the chlorine uh, by aluminum chloride and so this uh, carbon chlorine bond breaks and I get this aluminum chloride complex here plus a secondary carbocation and then the ring in this case is a nucleophile it attacks the carbocation and now the carbocation is here uh, on the ring and then my plus charge is here. The, me the basic mechanism for uh, electrophilic aromatic substitution is the same 
even whether it's bromination, alkylation, or acylation, the basic mechanism is the same once you get to the step where the ring is attacking um, the, the uh, carbocation or whatever the electrophile is you're adding to the ring. Alright, so then this step is identical to the previous reaction where the aluminum chloride, uh, aluminum tetrachloride acts as a base, deprotonates, pull, push this pair of electrons here to give me my alkylated product. There's some limitations with this reaction. Uh, it doesn't work on uh, vinyl or arrow halide, so my um, the scope of the reaction is limited in that uh, what I add to the ring can only be an alkyl halide. Uh, doesn't work if the aromatic ring is substituted, um, and many times you'll get over alkylation. And the carbocation intermediates like this one often rearrange, which is something we'll talk about uh, in class. All right, so the last reaction, real quick, uh, under the umbrella of electrophilic aromatic substitution, is Friedel Crafts acylation. So anytime I add a carbonyl group to the ring or to anything, that's called an acylation. The word acyl. Uh, it, it's indicative of having a carbonyl present. So I need my benzene ring, I need an acid chloride, and once I have uh, my acid chloride in the presence of aluminum uh, trichloride, I can actually take the acyl part of the acid chloride, meaning the carbonyl part, and I can add that to the ring. Alright, notice my ring is still aromatic, none of my double bonds are broken. So the first step in the mechanism is similar to the other two mechanisms that we've seen so far. The aluminum chloride again activates the acid chloride here, basically ripping off the chlorine and leaving behind uh, this oxonium ion. Okay, and then this is my electrophile and this is what's going to be added to the ring. So let's look at what happens here. Here's the intermediate oxonium ion. Here is the ring. Let's look at the arrows here. All right. So the ring attacks the oxonium ion, and then again I get this uranium ion intermediate, same intermediate I got in the previous two reactions, and then the same thing happens here. The uh, aluminum tetrachloride acts as a base, comes in and deprotonates, puts the double bond here, and then reestablishes aromaticity. So we have some other reactions that we'll look at, but for now this will be for tomorrow, and then. Every day this week we'll have a video preceding class.